hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i made this dress with a box hip line if it's something you are interested in please keep on watching and let's get started with the video so as you can see i already drew a straight line on top of my paper which will serve as a guideline for my shoulder slope and is about one inch so i divided my shoulder into two my shoulder is 16 divided by two gave me eight inches then i'll come down by one inch for the shoulder slope then the next thing i'll be taking is my neck width i'll be using three inches and i'll use my ruler to connect that three inches to the one inch i came down by for my shoulder slope so the next thing i'll be doing is i want to mark my armhole measurement which is about eight inches then i'm just making sure that um, the eight inches i used uh, for my shoulder slope is equal that's all i'm trying to do so it doesn't shift so i'll just simply connect like this then i'll draw a straight line also like this so this is just my armhole um, curve i'm trying to get so the next thing i'll be doing right now is to measure my shoulder to my bust point which is about 10 inches so i'm just going to mark it across my paper horizontally like this and i'll use my ruler to connect the dots that i made i'm just trying to draw a um, basic pattern for this dress first before we start uh, making it then i'll draw my shoulder to my waist measurement which is about 16 inches so i'm just going to mix um, make the dots before i connect it and i'll use my ruler to connect also like this so before i continue i'm just going to label this line so we don't get confused so that's my bust point and my waist line so the next measurement i'll be taking right now is my waist to my hip measurement which is about nine inches it's between eight to nine inches for um, any body size so you can as well measure on your client's body or on the body of the um, person you're making the dress for so right now i'm just going to use my ruler to connect also and i'll also label, label it so that's my hip line so to get my armhole curve i'm just going to divide this line into two and it is four inches and i will come out by about half an inch to get my um, armhole curve now i use my ruler to connect um the shoulder slope to the four inches like this then i'll also make a curve like this so i'm just trying to get the armhole curve so the next measurement i'll be taking is my neck depth so um i'm going to be using about 7.5 inches and um, i'm using a v-shaped neck so i'm just going to make a curve like this sorry my camera didn't capture it where you see the end result of what i did so i just um, matched my um my neck depth to the neck with dazzle so right now i'll be taking my dart measurement and all i need to do is divide my nipple to nipple measurements by two my nipple to nipple measurement is eight divided by two will give me four inches so i'm just going to mark that four inches all the way like this i'm going to mark it on my bust point on my waistline and on my hip line so i'm just going to use my ruler to connect those um dots that i made that's the four inches that i marked so i'm just going to connect like this so on that line i'm just going to come down by one inch like so then on my waistline i'm going to um take half an inch on both sides i'm just trying to get my that um, um line so right now i'm going to use my ruler to connect that half inch i took i'm going to connect it to the one inch i came down by so i'm just going to connect it like this so the next thing i'll be doing is to take one inch upwards on my hip line so i'll just use my ruler to connect that half inch i took on both sides of my waistline i'm just going to connect it to the one inch i took downwards on my hip line so i'm just going to connect it like this 
so right now i'll be taking my measurements and i'll start with my bust circumference my bust circumference divided by four is nine inches but i'll be taking it on my armhole measurement so nine inches i'll be adding 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance so the next measurement i'll be taking is my waist circumference my waist circumference divided by four is eight inches then i'll be adding one inch the one inch at this dart part i'm going to add it that's the allowance for my dart please don't forget to add that also then i'll add 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance so next i'll be taking my hip circumference my hip circumference divided by four is 10 inches so i'm just going to add 1.5 inches for my allowance so the only extra allowance we um added is the one at the waist please don't forget we just added one inch extra at the waist for the that allowance so i'm just going to use my ruler to connect um the points that i marked i'm just going to connect it like so so right now i'm going to um draw the back effect that um, the dress has after the hip line so uh, i'm going to be using about six inches you can use either five or six inches so i'm just going to use six inches for myself so depending on how deep you want it to be so you can use five or six inches and i'm going to use my ruler to connect So you can see the um, neck um, that I, I drew, the one that didn't show very well in the other part of the video. And I also added um, half an inch for my shoulder allowance, so that's for joining it together so it doesn't come up short. So I just added about half an inch to it. So we are done drafting the front part of this dress. All we need to do now is just to cut it out. I just want to label this part as the front so right now i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out so for the back part of this um pattern i'm just going to be taking 1.5 inches first for my zip allowance please don't forget to add your zip allowance is very very important this dress is going to be having a zip so i'm just adding 1.5 inches for my zip allowance first if you're drafting on your material you have to do the same thing also so you just leave about 1.5 inches before you place your front pattern on it so right now i'm just going to use my ruler to make a connection like so So I'll just go ahead and label it. This is my zip allowance. So I'm going to be doing the same thing I did at the front for the back. I'm going to be marking three inches for my neck um, width. Then I'll mark eight inches for my shoulder uh, measurements. So, but I'm starting from the line of the zip allowance. Please don't forget. Then I'll come down by one inch for my shoulder slope. It's exactly the same thing I did at the front, I'm doing at the back. The only difference is that I'm starting from my zip allowance. So also, I'll be marking my armhole measurement, which is 8 inches. Then I'm also making sure that the same 8 inches I use for my shoulder measurement is what I'm marking right here. Then I'm going to use my ruler to connect that um, shoulder slope to the 8 inches downwards, like so. So I'm just trying to mark my armhole curve also for the back. So right now, I'll take my shoulder to my bust point, which is 10 inches, the same way I did at the front. So I'm just going to mark um, the dots across like so. So I'll also connect those um, dots like so. Then I also mark my shoulder to my waist measurements, which is 16 inches. Then I'll go ahead and connect like so. Okay. 
and right now I'll come down by eight nine inches um, for my hip line that's nine inches after my waistline the same way I did at the front I'm just going to connect it like so so right now um, I want to mark my armhole curve but before doing that I'll mark my bust circumference divided by four is nine inches I just want to make a simple adjustment here um, the line was not looking straight to me that's why I added um, I just made an adjustment then from that nine inches I marked I'm going to be adding 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance so as you know the armhole um, curve at the back is different from the one in the front so i'm just going to use my ruler to connect um like this outside of that line that i marked unlike the fronts that we are marking inwards so i'm just going to be marking it um outwards that's after dividing this particular um line into two so right now i want to take my dart um measurements and my nipple to the nipple divided by two will, be, will give me four inches so the same way i marked it at the front that's what i'm doing at the back right now then i'll use my ruler to draw a straight line connecting all the dots i marked on each line then i'll come down by one inch from my bust line and I'll go in by half an inch and come out by half an inch on my waistline. That's for my dart. And I'll use my ruler to connect like so. That's connecting the one inch I came down by to the half inch I took on my waistline. Then on my hip line, I'll go up by one inch. Then I'll connect also like so. So it's just exactly what I did at the front that I'm doing at the back. So right now i'll just go ahead and label the line so we don't get confused my, that's my bust line my waist and my hip line so right now i'm taking my waist circumference my waist circumference divided by four is eight inches then i'll be adding the one inch of allowance at the that uh, part i'm going to add it plus my 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance then at my hip line my hip divided by four is 10 inches uh, let me just extend this line so i can add the allowance so um, my hip divided by four is 10 inches and i'll add 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance as you know already i've added my allowance to my um my armhole that's for my bust circumference i've added it already to my armhole so right now i'm just making the connection so right now i'm going to be drawing the back effect um after the hip line which is six inches so i'll use my ruler to connect it like so i'm just going to make a connection So we're done drafting the pattern for the back um all we need to do is cut it out but right now i just want to extend um the um the back line towards the zip allowance so i'm just going to cut it out now but before i continue cutting i forgot to take the neck depth for the back and i'm using 1.5 inches so I'm going to use my ruler to connect um, 1.5 inches by 3 inches. Remember the neck width is 3 inches. So right now I'll use my ruler to connect. Then I'll also uh, make a curve. That's for the neck. So right now i'll go ahead um, and continue cutting so remember i'm cutting straight from my zip allowance and i also added half an inch for my shoulder um, allowance please don't forget to add it 
So I also labeled this at the back. So this is the back and front. So I'm going to be using this net material for um, this dress, but I'm going to be using a doll face to um, line the inside of it. So I'll just go ahead and fold my material into two like so. So as you can see, I folded it into two before I place my pattern paper on it. So I've placed my pattern paper on it while it's folded into two. I'll just go ahead and cut it out. But before I start cutting, I'm going to add about half an inch at the back part of the dress. As for the gathered part, I'm going to add about half an inch for allowance. Please make sure you add um, the half an inch so it doesn't come out short. So right now, I'll go ahead and cut it out. So this is the front part um, of the dress, you yeah, don't cut in and um, I did the same thing I did for the front, I did it also for the back, I just placed my paper on my material and I cut out and I made sure I let um, half an inch allowance, um, the, the same way I did at the front, I made sure I left um, half an inch allowance also at the back. So for the back, uh, remember there is a zipper allowance that we have to slash into two. So right now, I'm just going to do that. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be using a doll face material um, to line this dress. And um, this is the doll face I'll be using. You can use any type of material you want to be on that, but I'm going to be using a doll face. And this is what it's going to look like on the inside. So I'm just going to cut out the exact pattern um, um, as the net. I'm just going to cut it exactly on the doll face. So I'm also going to fold the doll face into two like I did um, with the net. I'm going to place my pattern paper on it also and I'm going to cut it out. So before cutting, I'm going to add the half an inch I added on the net. I'm also going to add it on this doll face. Please don't forget to add it. So right now, I'll go ahead and cut it out. So the next thing I'll be doing right now is to place this net uh, material on my doll face material. This is what it's going to look like on the inside. So I'll go to my sewing machine and I'll run a stitch on the neck. That's the V-shaped part of the dress. I remember this um, glossy part of the doll face will be the one showing um, on the outside. So you have to be careful when sewing. So after sewing, uh, I just trimmed out the excess part on the inside and I made a notch on it. So right now, I'm going to flip it over to the other side. As I'm flipping it to the wrong side now. And I'm going to sew around the dress. Just watch closely on what I'm doing. So you can see the glossy part. I'm just going to um, turn it like this and I'm going to sew all the way around. So I'm just going to run my stitch all the way like this. I'm going to leave out only the um the armhole area, just only um the side seam. So this is what it looks like after running my stitch on it, and I'm just going to go ahead and trim it out. So be careful when you are trimming so you don't trim um the sewn part of the dress. So 
so after trimming it i'm just going to go ahead and flip it over to the other side just watch what i'm doing remember i didn't sew the armhole so i'm just going to um, take um, the other side out from the armhole just watch what i'm doing So as you can see, this is what it looks like and see how neat it looks on the inside. So I'm just going to make sure I bring everything out properly and you can see how neat it looks. So all I need to do now is just go ahead and iron it or iron all the edges. And I also um, did the same thing at the back. Remember the back is two piece because of the zip. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, place the back on top of each other. So after placing it on top of each other like this, I'll go ahead and sew that 1.5 inches allowance I left for the zip. So I'm done sewing it and this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to place it aside. And right now I'll be um, inserting my dart on my dress. So I'm just going to fold my dress together like this. And the next thing I'll do right now is just I'm going to place my tape from my shoulder measurement like this. I mean on my shoulder slope, sorry. But remember that half inch we left for our shoulder allowance. I'm just going to come down by the half inch. Then I'll place my tape on from my shoulder to my bust point. Then also from my shoulder to my waist, which is 16 inches then from my waist to uh, my hip line that will be nine inches i'm also going to mark that so i'm just going to use my ruler to extend these lines i'll just go ahead and use my ruler to extend so right now i'll be taking my nipple to nipple measurement which is four inches so i'm just going to take it to my bust point on my waistline and on my hip line so right now i use my ruler to connect those lines i made together and i'll just extend it so the next thing i'll be doing is to come down by one inch from my bust line then on my waistline i'll take half inch on both sides like so then on my hip line also i'll go up by one inch so it's just the same thing i did on um, the paper when i was drafting it out that i'm doing right here so right now I'll just connect the one inch to the half inch I took on both sides of my waistline. So I'm going to be doing the same thing I did at the front for the back. So the only difference at the back is that I'm going to be starting from my zipper allowance. So the 4 inches I took at the front, I'm going to be starting right from the zipper allowance that I left. Please don't make that mistake. So after adding the darts to the back, I'll go ahead and attach the zipper for the back also. So you can either add the zipper before sewing the darts or either ways you can sew the dart first. So I'm just going to go ahead and run a stitch on this um, that line that I made. If it's possible, you can pin it down because the net might shift from the doll face. So as to not to uh, shift when you're sewing it, you can pin it down before you sew the dart. So this is what it looks like after um, sewing the dart of the front and the back. The next thing I'll be doing right now is that I'm going to go ahead and sew the shoulder of the front and back together. So by doing so, I'm going to pin it down first before I sew the shoulders together. So I've gone ahead to attach the shoulder of the front and back together and um, this is what it looks like. The next thing I'll be doing is that I'm going to be taking my body measurements. That means I'm attaching the front and the back piece together. So I'm just going to use my body measurements to do that. So before doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and pin them down so that it doesn't shift when I'm sewing. So I'm just going to pin the both sides together.
So after pinning, I'll just go ahead and run the stitch on both sides. So right now, I'll be cutting out the gathered part of the dress. Um, that's the down part of the dress. And the length I'll be using is 15 inches. The width will be about 120 inches. But two of it, that will be 240. You know this is a net material and um, it has to be really, really full. So I'll be using 120 um, yards times two. So that will be 240. So depending on how full you want it to be, you can reduce it and you can add more to it. But I want mine to be very, very full. This is a net material, it's kind of lightweight. So this is two of it, as you can see. So the next thing I'll do is to fold the hem of the material like this and I'll run a gather stitch on it. So this is what it looks like after running the gather stitch on it. Remember I folded the hem into two. This is because I'm placing it directly on my dress. So um, just watch what I do next. So because of how full I want my gathers to be, if you notice, I still went ahead to fold um, the gathers into two because it's very, very long. So um, I will now place it on my dress like this. I'll place it on my dress and I'll go ahead and pin it down. So just watch closely um, on what I'm doing. So I'm going to be starting from the back. Just watch what I'm doing. I'm leaving a little bit of like about half an inch allowance before I start pinning it down. So I'm just going to place it on top like this. Then I'll pin it down. So I'm just going to place it all the way around like this. So when I was done arranging it on my dress, I just went ahead to run a stitch around it and um, this is what it looks like as you can see. Uh, this is how neat it looks. All I need to do is just go ahead and join this place together. I'll just turn it over to the other side and I'll go ahead and run a stitch. That's all. So the next thing we'll be doing now is to cut out the sleeve and as you can see, I already have a um, basic pattern for my sleeve and I left enough allowance because of the puffiness uh, at the shoulder of the sleeve. So depending on how full you want your sleeve to be, you can leave up to 10 inches extra um, if you want to. So you can leave 10 inches extra from your normal sleeve. Mine, I left, I think I left about 15 inches there about. You know, this is a net material and um, it's lightweight. So you're just going to leave as much um, allowance as you want to for the puffiness to come out. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out. So moving on, the next part I'll be cutting out is the bishop part of this sleeve. And um, I'll be using this doll face to line the net of the sleeve so right now I'm just going to go ahead and fold this into two and um, I'll be using my wrist circumference my wrist circumference is about seven inches but I'm going to be adding extra two inches for ease and also allowance so right now I'm just going to be marking about nine inches instead of the normal seven inches I'm going to mark nine inches so I'll just mark it all the way like so then i'm going to be using um three inches for the length that's including my allowance it's supposed to be about two inches but i'm going to be adding three inches that's for um the allowance so right now i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out 
so right now i'm just going to place that on my net like so and i'll go ahead and cut it out the same way so right now i'll just go ahead and place it on top of each other and run a tiny stitch around it so that it doesn't move when i'm sewing so i'm just going to run a tiny stitch around it so i'm done sewing and um, the next thing i'll do right now is trim out the excess material that's um the excess around it i'll just go ahead and trim it out So the next thing I'll do right now is to fold this um, into two. I'll fold it into two like this. Then I'll go ahead and iron it. But before ironing the hem part of it, I'm just going to fold like about half an inch. Remember the um, extra one inch we left? I'm just going to fold half an inch on both sides of it like this. So I'll fold it like this the first one then the other one it should be a little higher than the first one you can leave about quarter as you can see see the way i'm folding it one is higher than the other one so that's when i um insert my sleeve and i'm sewing on it um it doesn't shift so make sure one is higher than the other one see the way i'm folding it so right now i'm just going to iron it the same way so this is what it looks like after ironing it as you can see one place is higher than the other one so i just did that for both of the sleeves so right now i'm going to bring in my main sleeve and uh, what i'll be doing right now is that i'll run a gathered stitch at the hem of my sleeve so when i'm done doing that i'll go ahead and just pull um the the stitch that's the gathered stitch i ran of the material i'll just go ahead and pull it gently so when i'm done doing that i'll just go ahead and arrange the gathers on the bishop part of the sleeve i'll just go ahead and arrange it gently i'll arrange it according to um the length of the the bishop part of the sleeve so i'll put the shorter one on top and the longer one will be inside i'll just go ahead and use my pin to hold it down so that it doesn't shift when I'm um, sewing. So this is what it's going to look like. So make sure you arrange it properly so that when you're sewing on it, it doesn't shift. So after arranging, all I need to do is just go ahead and um, run a stitch on it. So I'll just take my time so that it does not shift this is the inside and that's the outer part and um i'm done with that as you can see this is what it looks like see how neat it looks so right now i'll be joining the sleeve together and i'm just going to fold it like this you can use your pin to hold it down if you want to but for me i'll just go ahead and i'll run a stitch through it like this so once I'm done sewing the sleeve, I'll go ahead and um, attach it to the dress. But before doing that, I'll pin it down. I'll arrange it gently and pin it down. Remember, um, it's going to have a bit of puff at the shoulder. So I'll just make sure I arrange it properly first before sewing it so that I don't make any mistake. So I'm just going to use my pin to pin it down carefully. so once i get to the shoulder part as i'm pinning it around once i get to the shoulder part remember that excess that we left about 10 inches there about i'll just go ahead and pleat it carefully just watch what i'm doing i'll go ahead and pleat it carefully and after pleating i'll just sew it round. and um this is what the dress looks like after sewing all it needs is proper ironing and um, we are done with this dress you can see how beautiful and neat it looks please if you've enjoyed the video so far don't forget to subscribe you can also like and share it and we've come to the end of today's tutorial i'll see you in my next video bye